All right. Well, good morning and welcome to the world's biggest little farm live stream coming to you live this morning from Cashton, Wisconsin, from southwestern Wisconsin. And also this morning, uh, our special farmer guest will be from Ohio. My name is Andrew Westrich. I am the cheese brand manager here at Organic Valley, and this is my co-host for your first hour today. Good morning, Dawn Burns. I also work in marketing, in brand marketing, focusing on fluid. So we're here today. This is celebrating a big day, as Andrew mentioned, but it's also National Farmers Day. So we have a very special guest for the first hour to introduce you to. So we're going to kick it over all the way over to Ohio. Julia, are you with us? Good morning, Good morning. There Julia. She is. There oh, we I'm are. Hey. Okay, out in the pasture. <laughs> yeah, you have probably been up earlier than most of us. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about how your morning has gone or other folks, uh, uh, family members on the farm, what, what you guys have been up to this morning. So the cows have been milked. The cows have been up earlier than some, but I will say one misconception of um, just farmers across the board is that we're all like up before the sun, uh, you know, three or 4 a.m. And that's, I'll say that's not really the case for us here on our farm. We are not super early risers. So we usually start uh, milking the cows around 6.30, 7 o'clock. Um, this is the milking parlor here in the background, and I'm going to be showing you um, the pasture here soon. We are about ready to let the cows out on pasture, so that'll be exciting. But yeah, we, um, we're usually milking 6.30 to 7 um, in the morning, and then 5.30 to 6-ish is when we start in the evening. And it takes the whole milking process from start to finish takes uh, roughly two hours. So, um, Okay. And I, I, gotta I tell actually... You, that's still early 6 6 30 is still early to be like going to work yeah. right away so yeah that's awesome. yeah i guess <laughs> the yeah, good news is the cows don't care how we look so <laughs> that's true. It, no it, need it to a... get ready or anything just true true run out right. the door. <laughs> so lovely sunrise there this morning too um it looks fabulous out there and pasture still still green yes it's it's gorgeous it's lush i i do want to note here we're doing something slightly different than we typically do um, this morning, and I'll, I'll take you over here if you want to just come with me. Um, you'll notice that there's actually some pasture that has been mowed, and I'm going to explain the reason for that. So this seeding, the cows um, on our farm get fresh pasture every 12 hours. They're moved to a new, um, completely fresh area to graze, and I can get more into that. If you want me to dive right in now, I can, or we can wait, but I'm very passionate about um, the way that we do this. It's called rotational grazing. Quick, I just want to call out, we have some schools from Ohio actually on. Yes. And so can we yes. get some likes for anyone in Ohio right now? Can you like us, show us some love and we uh, show Yay. Julia that you're here with us? Um, this is my brother-in-law, Dan, here. You can see him in the background. I there he is. Hey, Dan. Uh, good morning, Dan. Good <laughs> up the uh, pasture for the cows this morning. Um, so back to this, since it does look a little bit different than um, you might have expected, the reason that they mowed this section before giving it to the cows this time is this particular field is a new seeding. So we do actually reseed the pastures. It, it might be, you know, in three years, it might go 10 years. It just depends on the diversity of species that um, are growing in that particular pasture. And if there's not as much of diversity as we're hoping for, then we might reseed it. Or if it just needs a little, you know, refresh. But because the alfalfa is predominant in this particular pasture, we, um, we mow it down before the cows get on it to keep them healthy because um, it, they would just go for the tasty tops of the alfalfa, and if they would get too much of that, it would make them sick. So for cow health, we um, just freshly mow it, and then they graze it just as they would from the pasture, but they just graze it um, so they get more of the full, the whole stem um, to keep them healthy. But we did, we did leave a small section because this is not going to be too much. We just can't give them the whole thing um, fresh right now with just the the way the pasture is so um, you'll be able to see some of both and I'll show you that when they come out that is so cool it's like a cow salad bar right, right. like essentially that's all Absolutely. the different types of grasses yeah yep. 
And so what are the benefits of, of, yeah. of different grasses? Is it sort of like for humans, like we should have different fruits and vegetables? Is it similar to that? They, do they get different things from different grasses? It is similar. Yes. So there's, it's like, like she was saying, it's a nutrient salad bar. So each of the species pulls different nutrients from the soil and um, like certain ones like dandelions, the cows actually love dandelions and they are a deep tap root and they are able to go deeper into the soil than some of the other grasses, which form like a carpet with their roots and pull um, nutrients from deeper within. So that's, um, yeah, we, we just love what we're very passionate about a huge variety. We love having that um, biodiversity, like within not only like the wildlife and, you know, things on our farm, but also in the, um, the pasture species. So yeah, that's, that's neat. My, uh, my father-in-law says, um, a weed is just a plant out of place. <laughs> so we it's love interesting. They love the dandelions. They need to come to my house. Or our well, house I was going to can... say, yeah, yeah right? dandelions in your field are a good thing. Dandelions in my lawn, not so good. Okay, Cause I don't have cows to eat. Them. Right. Fabulous. Cool. All right. So, um, are, are the, uh, are we seeing the cows coming out at all or are they still hanging out? Uh, they're the they're going to be coming out. Yep. About 30 seconds. So let's come over here and we will, I'll give you the first look. Um, sometimes Dan actually makes the, uh, makes the pasture while the others are milking and then the cows just trickle out, you know, as soon as they get done milking, they actually typically, we bring them off the pasture to milk and then they go right back out. So the, the process of actually being, um, being on the milker is only a, a couple minutes. Oh, okay. So it's pretty quick. Yeah. So thank you, Julia. Thank you, farmers. Happy National Farmers Day. We are excited for today. Okay. There they are. Oh, I see them coming. Hi, girl. They're not camera shy. No. <laughs> oh, no. They're probably They're hungry. Very used to it. They're actually yeah. very curious by nature. And if I'm just sitting out in the pasture, they'll just pretty soon be surrounding me. They're really excited for this new pasture. So I'm going to take you over before they... Um, get this part um, ate down a little more. I'm going to bring you to the the standing pasture so you can see what it typically looks like as soon as they come out. Um, they're oh, yeah, they're, they they're usually head right there, for the corner of the field. Julie, how many so cows do you have on your farm? Yeah, about 200 is what we're milking. So I think this is sparkler here or ember. This is ember. Whoops. Oh, pretty. Ember. So now how do you come up with the names? <laughs> so usually I name them like something to do with their, like how they look. Um, she was a little, like she had a red hue. So we went with Ember or sometimes I'll name like based on the mom's name. So um, I think her mom's name might've been Sparkler. So we went with like a little fire theme. Um, nice. But yeah, sometimes I just use my creative, um, uh, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I don't know do you ever, do you ever, <laughs> do you ever recycle names or does, are they always unique? Like if you've got like a running list over the years and you're like, nope, yeah, I keep one. a running list. I, oh, I do. No and duplicate. actually, uh, um, so far I haven't had any du duplicates that I know of. And I actually, this is, um, this is fun. I actually made a friend that now works at organic Valley, um, and we met through Instagram. I did like a poll on cow names, like who wants to, <laughs> you know, help me name these cows. And um, so we had been communicating ever since. And now she works at Organic Valley and um, we're good friends. So, um, but yes, we're getting lots of love, uh, Julia, from our uh, posts. Lots of hearts coming up. People really love Yay! seeing the cows. Thank you guys for showing the girls some love. Here we have another little jersey. I'll just explain some of the breeds we have. So actually the herd started out um, as Hol a Holstein herd, the black and white cows that um, most of you are probably familiar with. And for ease of calving for the first time cows, like when it, it was their first calf, um, we started breeding them to a Jersey bull since that is a smaller breed. And then, of course, this was actually before I joined the family, but of course, my husband's family was um, thought the calves were just so cute. You know, they tend to be smaller and they're usually brown. And 
So of course they started to keep some. So now over the years, we've kept quite a few of these um, Jersey crosses. So we actually have never um, introduced like purebred Jersey calves, but like some of these, like this girl here, I think this is Amarilla. Sometimes I forget because they look similar, but um, Amarilla here, she mm -hmm. is probably like a seven eighths percent, like, um, or whatever, seven eighths Jersey. So I do a little math, cow math. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just love to sometimes just come out here and just lay in the pasture. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever made a pasture angel. It's kind of like a pasture that angel. That is fabulous. That's cool. <laughs> um, but uh, usually once the cows get a little um, to eat, they'll probably start surrounding us and, um, yeah, showing, showing you their personalities. Every cow has a different personality, um, just like us humans. And it's just fun to see um, the different quirks of some of them. Um, different ones will be maybe a little more um, bossy than the others or uh, <laughs> they, they tend to get into a routine when we're in the parlor. So you have ones that like we have two sides to enter the milking parlor and there are certain ones that will only go on like one or the other of the sides. <laughs> so, um, but that's something that they, they love to get milked. They don't mind it. It's, we keep their comfort in mind, of course. And you'll just, you'll notice like probably at the other farms that you two are later today. Um, if you're in the milking parlor with them, the cows are just relaxed, chewing their cud, you know, not a care in the world. So I do yeah. want to jump in quick. Uh, we have a question from Wisconsin here. How much milk do you get from each cow? So actually I should have noted this at the beginning, but our farm um, is one of the grass milk farms um, with Organic Valley. So we actually, um, the cows are getting 100% forages. So they're not getting any grain. All of Organic Valley farms meet the pasture requirements um, that Organic Valley has set, which is, I believe, above the typical like standard for grass fed um, anyway, but um, ours is just slightly different. They do not give as much as cows that would be um, also getting grains. So yeah, 20 to 30, I would say. Wow. Okay. Roughly. And so 20, um, 20 to 30 pounds, like just for folks at home, what does that mean? Like a gallon of milk is about eight pounds. So then if we can do math, right? <laughs> so maybe three-ish gallons. And then they get milk gallons. twice a day. They get milk right? and milk twice a day. So, yeah. yeah. So doing math for all these right, schools way too that early. are online. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, uh, and for any of the schools that are online, of course, too, this is a, uh, you know, cow joke friendly, uh, farmer mm -hmm. friendly, uh, farmer joke friendly uh, space. So we can put some, uh, put, put some fun ones in there. Um, I know one of my favorite <laughs> ones is, uh, Don, what did the mummy cow say to the baby cow? What? It's past your bedtime. Uh, okay. okay. I'll All take right. the next joke. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> Julia, like, yeah, I need a drum roll on that one. Um, so Julia, I, some of them are kind of loud chompers. Uh, as they were getting close to you, I heard kind of the smacking of the lips. Um, I mean, talk oh, yeah. us about like, Let's are they, I mean, are they chewing? Like, yeah. How do they rip it up? Do they have teeth? I mean, how, how do they eat? Yeah, let's get a closer look here. Um, let's see. They kind of curl their tongues around the grass and rip it up that way. Mm -hmm. And an interesting fact is that cows don't have front top teeth. They use their tongues to grab it and then they pull it back into their mouth. And cows are ruminants, which means they their stomach is called a rumen, and it's actually a four-part digestive system. So they are specifically designed to be eating forages, uh, especially like long stem forages, like you can see here. We have this, um, this is alfalfa, and it's pretty long, like from the base to the tip and that is ideal for the cows it gives them very healthy rumens julia why do we call it grass milk yes because it's um that milk is coming from farmers that are 
um, feeding only grasses. And so they're getting forages all year long. The, the reason that we're very passionate about that and we really like doing it that way is because it makes for a very healthy milk, which um, we personally love and we know that our consumers will appreciate as well. Everyone's familiar with omega-3s, probably. That's like what you would get in your fish oils and things like that. Well, um, grains are higher in omega-6. So omega-6 is like the one that tends to be um, a little more like it can it can lead to like inflammation and things like that. So you just want to that's why, you know, your doctor might recommend, you know, supplementing with omega threes or or something to um, ideally those would be imbalanced. I think in a typical situation where the cows are fed like quite a bit of grain, basically it's just the omega sixes tend to be more because grains are high in omega six with the grass milk, since they're getting 100 percent forages which can also include things like sorghum. Um, we use, <laughs> I don't know if this is getting a little too sciencey, but we use um, male sterile sorghum. So plants can be like male and female. So we use the ones that don't have the grain. And that's something that we sometimes supplement with in the winter. But anyway, with the forage-based diet, the cow's milk is a one-to-one -one ratio or even... Like, we've had tests where it's been higher omega-3s than omega-6s, which is really cool. So, it's, the, the milk is like a supplement in itself. Yeah, yeah. omega that's, is so important, that's, right? That's uh, fabulous. Like, I didn't, I didn't know that about sorghum. So, like, I learned something today, and I've been <laughs> in the dairy business for, like, 10 years. I've never heard that. That's awesome. Um, okay, and, and awesome. Two, and, like, and, and go science -y all the way. I mean, I mean farming is okay. science, it right? Is. Farming is yep. science. It's yeah. a leap of faith also along with that. Um, and if folks are interested, um, you know, there are there is this uh, specific study that was done that if you want to dive deeper into it, University of Minnesota actually did testing on grass-fed dairy uh, compared to non-grass-fed. And there's an um, independent study done, done by them. You can Google it and uh, you can uh, dive into and geek out on all the omega-3, omega-6 uh, science that you, that you want from that study. Yeah. Well, in our grass milk, right, we have it in our half gallons, um, whole 2%. Uh, one percent scam, but we also have it cheese. in cheese. our cheese. Yeah, it's perfect t-shirt. Grass milk cheese. <laughs> we have a mild and a sharp uh, raw style grass milk cheddar. It's fabulous. The grassy notes really come through in the in, in the cheese. <laughs> uh, um, and there we got. Yep, yeah, I think we have a cow loose. A cow uh, loose in in our office local, here in Cash. Call the local Wisconsin. farmer. So, um, <laughs> so Julia. Talk to us about how you got into farming. I mean, were you raised on a farm? Did you come to farm later? Like, how did you get there? So I wasn't raised on a farm. However, I always dreamed of marrying a farmer and farming. <laughs> so um, that dream came true when I married my husband, Greg, in 2023. And he grew up farming. And so Greg has grown up on a, an organic farm pretty much his entire life. Uh, and so I've been farming about nine years now, a little over nine years. And, um, I just love it. It's, I feel very blessed to be able to do this. And, and who else farms with you is it's you and your husband. Uh, you have your extended family, uh, who's all involved. Yeah. Yeah. So something neat about our farm is, or I think it's neat. Um, we are like strictly family owned and run. So we don't have at this point in time, we don't have any other employees, um, besides our family, myself and my husband, but his parents are still living on the home farm here. Um, uh, and his dad and mom are very involved. And then my husband's the oldest of four. So his two brothers still, um, live and work on the farm as well. And then he has a sister that got married earlier this year and she also still comes back. She doesn't live too far. So she comes like three days a week um, and also works on the farm with us. So it's, um, yep, myself and my in-laws. And then we have, um, we have a daughter. She just turned two and she helps on the farm too. She, she, <laughs> she helps us so much. She, um, she gets right in there. And I'll, she actually came out to the pasture oh. to say hi. So I'll uh, introduce oh, you. Hi. Good morning. This is Oakley. Can you say hello to our friends? 
Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she loves yet. to help on the farm. She um, she loves to feed the chickens. That's one of her biggest um, favorite jobs. And she also will help us milk the cows sometimes too. So, or or just play um, near the parlor uh, while we're milking. But she she's um, she's helped to dip the cows' udders clean and wipe them off and. Um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. What a good helper. We actually have a question from another little boy. Um, someone's asking, my son would like to know what is your largest cow? Oh. Ooh, okay. Let's go see if we can. I don't know if I specifically know off the top of my head what her name is, but let's find one that I think would win that. Um, for as far as breeds of cows, um, Holsteins tend to be pretty big, but also another breed that we've more recently started, um, doing some experimenting with is called Fleck V. So if you want to look that up, um, and do some little studying on your own, I think you would enjoy that, but, um, I'll show you what they look like. So we've been crossing them with the Holsteins, um, some, like some, we don't have very many, but, oh, here's one. I think this is Dakota. Um, I'll show you her and they tend to be a, a large breed and they're actually, um, like a dual purpose breed and they're, they're very large boned, um, just strong and sturdy cows, which is, um, they tend to do good on a forage based diet. Okay. This is Calgary. Her sister is Dakota. Um, so <laughs> one thing that's <laughs> about, Love it. about the fleck vase is, um, their markings. So the purebred ones are like a typically like a red and white, but when we breed them with the, the Holsteins, we, we get either like black and white, or as you can see here with Calgary, let me see. Oh, she's turning away. She's like a, a brown color, but they have white faces typically. And a lot of times they'll have like little uh, circles of color around their eyes too. So it's amazing to me that you remember all of their names. Yeah. I mean, that we have a fair amount of questions on, you know, and then think about I, teachers remembering their kids' names, yeah. <laughs> you know, like 20, like yeah. 30 kids, uh, whatever, if you're all met, whatever that might be, you know, 200 cows. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. They do have their names on their tags as well. So. Oh, okay, that's that awesome. Name tags. Name but tags. You, you notice <laughs> the markings them, though. Yeah. 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 Some of them you just know right off. Um, another breed that we have that's a large breed is called Normandy and they were originated in Normandy, France. And, um, they have a really pretty pattern too. This mama here, she's got like a really cool speckly pattern. Um, and they also tend to be a large breed. So I'm actually not sure which of our cows is like the very biggest, but those are some of the ones that I would say awesome. tend to be larger i think that, that was bridget so the 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 speckly cow is that where the cookies and cream ice cream comes from mm. yeah yeah and then yeah and the brown have, ones are where um, the chocolate milk comes from yeah we oh have boy. our we have Three our schoolers. chocolate milk cows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, uh, julia what other for anyone that is um <laughs> that you know might have that misconception no um, brown science, cows kids. don't give chocolate milk although that would be amazing it would be amazing. But. Um, Julia, do you guys have any other uh, animals on the farm? You mentioned chickens, and Oakley helps out with yes. the chickens. Do you have anything yes. else? Um, here on this farm, we have um, some pasture-raised hogs, some heritage breeds um, of pasture pigs. So they would. we have uh, Mangalitsta <clears throat> and American guinea hogs, if you <clears throat> want to do any digging on those breeds. Um, <clears throat> And we also have, oops, come here, honey. We have uh, a donkey named Peanut. He's a miniature donkey. My <laughs> my brother-in-law got him for his um, seventh birthday. <laughs> Actually, his mom. He got his mom as a gift for his seventh birthday, and then she had a couple of um, mini donkey foals. And so Peanut is a, he's an old man by now, but he uh, he's kind of the farm mascot. I was hoping he might be around today, but I don't. I don't see him. Um, he, he, I think they actually put him in his pasture, but he used to, for quite a while, he was just free roaming on the farm here. So he would just kind of graze with the cows or do whatever he pleased. So that was fun. Um, 
And then actually at, at my farm, which is just a couple miles down the road, um, I'm going to show you my herd of miniature goats. So I have a herd Ooh. of Nigerian oh dwarf goats. And um, <laughs> okay. they're a we lot of fun. Goats are fabulous. Yeah. They are the cutest things. Um, so I'm curious. So you came to farming. Um, you didn't grow up on a farm, came later in life. What are some of the things when you first started farming, you were like, oh, I didn't expect that. Like, and then like, oh, that's really cool. Or holy smokes, I didn't know it was going to be this much work. Yeah. So one thing that I was not used to was the times. Like we were, um, we would go to milking around 530 and uh, I was used to my dad coming home from work around that time. So it was like, we're, we're heading to work when everyone else is coming home. So that was a little different at first, but, um, now we're in a good rhythm with that and it's no big deal, but yeah. Talk a little bit about your name, na- your neighborhood. Uh, this is not like the typical suburban neighborhood. Obviously you're out in the country on the farm. So who are your neighbors? Do you have other, uh, dairy farmers, other crop farmers? Who's in the neighborhood? Yeah, actually, this is really cool. We, um, our neighbors right across the road from us are actually organic Valley farmers as well. So, um, that's, uh, really fun. I was, um, just telling a friend, we, um, we recently went over there for a barn party. They had like blow up, um, bouncy houses, ice cream, hayride, big, uh, barn hymn singing. It was just like good old fashioned, uh, country fun. So we're, we're very close to, and there's other farmers in the area too, of course, but, um, my husband and his siblings grew up, um, with the farmers across the road, mostly, um, who also farm with Organic Valley. So it's Scott and Charlene Stoller, if you're um, familiar with them from other videos. Absolutely, yeah. I want to show you um, something called a shade haven that we use for the cows. So my uh, father-in-law is bringing, right now, he's pulling something that looks like it might be a helicopter of some sort, but it's not. Let's see. (laughs) Can you you see him? Oh, sure. The brass. See the triangle? Yes. So, um, that is called a shade haven and that's something that we use, um, with our rotational grazing to offer the cows shade, um, especially through the summer. And that just offers the cows like a place to go for shade. There's a, a, um, a built in like brush on the side so they can like scratch their itches on it. Um, and of course they have, they can go back to the barn like throughout the day, which a lot of times they will like in the at midday when it's really hot, they'll go back to the barn and get a drink and just kind of rest, um, for a bit in between grazing. Um, so they always have access to that, but just if they want to, um, you know, get out of the sun or whatever they can come. Oh, you can see someone's already brushing on the brush here. Um, so that's like a massager. Is that like something you can, when you have an itch, you can just Oh, yep. That's so cool. <laughs> I need one of those in my oh. cube. Like, I know. That's what I they need. love it. It's so cute. It's a lot. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, so this allows us to, since the cows will tend to want to congregate under here, obviously, to get their massage and to be in the shade when it's really hot, then, of course, you know, with cows, there's going to be manure. So, um, they'll like, there'll be quite a bit of manure in this area, but then we can just move it to a fresh area. And, um, that allows us to fertilize the fields more evenly. So that's awesome. So he just cranks it out. And then this, what was like a triangle becomes like a big shade, like an umbrella. Yes. Cool. Look at, they're already coming under there. They oh, enjoy okay, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is cool. And oh, I, that was, that was cute. Oakley was like, Whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure she's seen it before, but that thing is big. That's awesome. We have this really cool silo. Ooh, Does this bring you going, back to your childhood uh, yeah, memories? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, I but that set. do you want to ask one? Yeah, while we're going, we to, we're going to the silo. Yeah. We have some questions. Oh, okay. Well, why are you a farmer? <laughs> I, well, I don't why? have much choice. No, she <laughs> married into it. No, um, yeah. Um, but like, why I desire to keep farming forever and yeah. ever um, is 
I just love being close to nature, being, you know, out under the blue skies and the grass um, with the animals. I'm a huge animal lover. So, um, yeah, I love, uh, you know, giving the cows some love and um, just being able to work as a family is a huge blessing. And, um, yeah, we, we all just really love it. Okay, Don, awesome. your oh. turn to pick. All right. Okay. It was a real good one. All right. All right. Ooh, Ooh, this is a good one. All right. Are there any traditions or celebrations on your farm that you look forward to each year? Um, My mother-in-law does really good about, um, like, making things special. So, like, a lot of times here on the farm, we'll have, um, like, little picnics, al fresco on the patio, um, with like cute, uh, tableware and tablecloth. And she just like really makes things special, even ordinary days. Sometimes we'll, we'll do like things like that throughout the summer or little cookouts. But of course, uh, I love any holidays. Uh, birthdays are fun. Um, they're especially fun now with Oakley. Um, we recently had my brother-in-law Matt's birthday, um, out on the patio of the farm here. And, we could like watch the cows grazing in the background and eat a little, uh, home cooked meal. And, uh, then of course, Oakley mm. likes to help, um, mm. blow out everyone's candles. Mm. So she, uh, <laughs> she's the honorary candle blower out of the family. One special oh. holiday. Hold on. I forgot. I almost forgot one special holiday, <laughs> um, I like, or, holiday. like a fun day of um here on the farm is the first day in spring when the pastures are regrown long for the cows to come out for the time which they have outdoor access all through the year but like when the pastures are you know ready for them to be actually eating them um letting them out for the first time they just love it they go crazy we have a question from jay taylor uh, and the question is do you have a favorite cow Mm, I can't pick favorites. <laughs> Any parent knows. <laughs> um, but so I, I kind of, I personally tend to like the jerseys. So here we have Edelweiss. Um, I love the name. Her that for, for her little, uh, her little white spots, like the Edelweiss flower. I, I just love their personalities in general. They're like very curious. They're the jerseys are usually the first ones in the parlor. Like they're. They're more fearless. They just go. (laughs) So they're, uh, they're a lot of fun, but I, I can't say specifically that I have, um, a a very favorite. I have my favorites (laughs) if I'm allowed to say that, but. Could we say um, to a top three? Do you have a top three? There's one named Lace. That's my, one of my special cows. So each of the, my husband and his siblings have, um, since they were, probably early teens, they started a herd of their own within the, um, within the, the main herd. So like the main herd, we all farm together, but each of them own like some of these cows. So, um, it's, it's fun. So like Greg and I have like some of our actual own personal cows. Um, so I would say like some of those are my favorite. I have one named JC, which stands for Julia's cow, but (laughs) (laughs) Uh, what year was organic Valley founded and extra credit. If you can name our first C E I E I O (laughs) George Seaman. And, um, I do not know exactly when, Hold on. I could probably figure it out, though, because this is a fun fact. Um, my father-in-law wanted to farm before, before uh, organically before organic was cool. And um, he they couldn't they didn't have organic. Valley was not picking up in Ohio at the time. So I think it was already a co-op, but they hadn't started the Ohio route yet. And so when my husband was young, his family actually had their own little co-op with about approximately 10 other like small family farms in our area and it was they were having to do like every part of the process which was just like a lot of work as you can imagine so when as soon as organic valley um realized that there was enough interest here in ohio to be able to start like a route for pickup um we of course jumped right on it so we've been very um blessed by the co-op 
1988. Oh. <laughs> you got <Yes>. it. <laughs> nice. Okay, you win yes. the prize. You got that one. What makes Organic Valley different than other other farming? What makes Organic different? Organic Valley special and unique. Okay, okay. Well, I think what's really cool is that we're a farmer-owned cooperative. So, um we're actually farmer owners. So I'm one of the owners of Organic Valley. Is she our boss? And, Does that mean she's uh, our boss? She's our boss. She's our, okay. All right. How are, we, how are we doing, boss? How are we doing? Get to work, you two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, so it's neat. And like I said, like doing, having to do like the, the stuff that we're not really equipped to as farmers, like back when we had, I wasn't in the family at the time, but when they had their own, like, you know, trying to, um, market and like that sort of thing. When you're just a farmer, like you just want to farm, you don't want to have to do that side of it. So being able to partner together, um, in, you know, be able to work in our strengths, like as a co-op is very neat, I think. Oh, we got some signs here for you, Julia. Happy National Farmers Day. All right, yeah, some of uh, the (laughs) other uh, office folks. Uh, Julia, take note, boss. Yeah. Yeah, They're not working. (laughs) We're all celebrating National Farmers Day together. That's That's really what we're doing. We're celebrating here. That's our job job today. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick before we wrap up, I wanted to introduce you to one of our our workhorses here on the farm. So... um, this is a fent tractor. We have two of these. Um, they're like twins. <laughs> um, and we also have three of these um, loader wagons. So they're a little bit different than you may have seen elsewhere. So I just wanted to show you like it's something um, unique about our farm specifically. But these are um, silage wagons. So when we're ch- uh, chopping like hay or sorghum, we can use these and typically how most farms will do it is they will have like a chopper that chops into a wagon but these wagons are cool because they actually have a chopper feature built in so you can just drive over the it's called a windrow when you have like rows of hay that are like raked together they can just drive these directly over and it chops the hay into like smaller pieces and conveyors like bring it back in here and then it fills it clear up so um that's kind of a fun thing that i feel like is a little more unique to probably a forage based um dairy since we're doing so much like haylage well our time is going to be ending here with julia we have more farmers coming on Woo! did you hear that yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) you get more live than that wow (laughs) <laughs> so continue oh, I to thought ask they your question. That, in. that was legit. Oh, hi. Right. <laughs> awesome. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, we are, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if you heard, we are going to be moving to Vermont here at the uh, the top of the hour, um, and then we'll uh, be visiting farms in Wisconsin and Oregon. We'll we'll uh, see Julia again this afternoon with her goats, goats adorbs, uh, this afternoon coming up. You can't miss that. Seriously, goats. Bye, Julia. Julia, We appreciate you. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on.